I think it's going to be signed on Thursday. I think we'll have the jobs bill. I think the next thing they're going to do is go look at the issue of what we're going to do with the. Um, well, I, I'm definitely going to be in Washington tomorrow because that's what our concern is. We get killed if we don't represent our interests in the disproportionate amount of uh, unemployment in our community. And I and Ben Jealous are going to be back in there tomorrow. I think Mark is going to join us, Laura Murphy and others. Uh, hold on a minute, Dr. Ogletree. I have on the line Tavis Smiley, I believe. What, is that Tavis Smiley? Reverend Al, how are you, sir? I, I was fine till you stopped messing with me this morning. What's wrong with you? Got Uh-oh. Wrong with me. Nothing's wrong with me, and I'm not messing with you or, or Brother Ogletree. I'm, 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 you doing, Tavis? Hey, Jay Charles, how are you? Good. What I, what I said this morning was uh, on national radio, which I'll say again now, is that we need to have a conversation about whether or not there needs to be a black agenda. And when there are certain African-American leaders, um, including respectfully and lovingly, as I said this morning, the two on this phone right now, who are quoted in the New York Times and other places coming out of meetings in the White House, suggesting publicly in the media uh, and to black people that this president doesn't need to have an African-American agenda, what I said this morning, and I prefaced it by saying how much I love you and Brother Ogletree, and Mark Morial, and Ben Jealous, and the icon, Dr. Dorothy Height. But when black leaders start saying to black people in the black media that we don't need to have this president focus on an African-American agenda, given that black folk are getting crushed, I said we need to come together to have a conversation about what that means. I think there's a disconnect between those kinds of quotes and black people. I made no. No, I think there's a disconnect I between. I think there's a disconnect between what you're saying and what was said. First right. of all, we never said that, and second of all, the New York Times never said we said that. And if you wait a minute, wait a minute, I didn't interrupt you. And if you thought we had said that, you should have picked up the phone and called and asked us. When people were beating you down last year for your opposition for President Obama, I came to your forum and defended you. So the least you could have done if you thought we said something that you had issue with was pick up the phone if you have such love for us and ask us, uh, was this said? But I challenge you to show me what New York Times said, that the New York Times said that we said we didn't discuss a race jobs bill. We did right not now. say that we did not think he needed to quote. discuss a quote. Now, I, can quote. I have the article in front of me. I can quote from it right now if you want. From which date? Because I want to pull it up. I got it right now. February 9th, 2010. Go ahead. And the article says, and I quote, talking about the fact that President Obama has been avoiding the race question. The article says, and I quote, February 9, 2010, many black leaders view this White House position as wise. The Reverend Al Sharpton, who is working with Mr. Obama to close the achievement gap in education, says the president is smart not to ballyhoo a black agenda. It goes on to quote Charles Ogletree. It goes on to quote Dr. Dorothy. Okay, well, well, Tavis, tell me, when I said that he is smart not to value a black agenda, how does that even come where, anywhere near you saying I walked out the White House saying that we don't need a black agenda that the president deals with? If I said that if you were getting ready to have an event and you'd be smart not to ballyhoo a certain segment of the event, that does not mean that I don't think you should have the event or emphasize something. What you just read is nowhere near what you said, Tavis. First of all, Reverend Al, if you get a transcript of what I said this morning, I did not say You anything. just told me what you said, and I'm not, telling you you're wrong. And what you just it. read does not correspond with what you said. I did not say anything more in my commentary this morning than what was said in these articles, number one. Number two, Mr. Smiley, and, you did not just read an article Reverend that we Al, walked outside of the White House and said that we don't need a black agenda. Reverend Al, and that's not what my commentary said this morning. You should but you commentary. just said that yourself. No, I'm, I'm, telling you, I'm telling you now what I said in my commentary this morning, number one. Number two, for ten consecutive years, you and Charles Ogletree were pretty much at every one of these forums that I've had on the State of the Black That's State. correct. And in ten consecutive years... I sent you the same letter this time that I sent all the others. If you say I didn't call you, I've never – we're friends, and we talk and hang out and have dinner together. But every year I invite you to participate in this conversation, I do it the same way. I first of all, Tavis, 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 first of all, you have always called me and said, hold this date. 
because you're getting a letter. Second of all, you announced publicly you are not having the forum this year. Exactly. You announced that publicly. Exactly. So sending me a letter and not even calling me and assuming I got a letter when you had announced you were not doing it is disingenuous. Well, now hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm going to let you talk office. as long as you want, but I'm going to hit you point by point. So that is disingenuous. Third of all, for you to get on and say that we said something that we didn't say and then read a quote that doesn't say that, because February 9th we hadn't even had to meet with the president. And I repeat, I don't think the president needs to value who a black agenda. That does not mean the president does not need to deal with a black agenda. The president does not need to get out there and do what we should be doing. Saying the president shouldn't value a black agenda is not saying the president should not be held to a black agenda or deal with a black agenda. And that is not what you said. Don't talk to us like we stupid, Tavis. Hold on a minute. We're going to take a break, and then I'm going to let you say whatever you want to say. But if you want to deal with truth, let's deal with truth lovingly. But don't love me and distort me. Keeping it real. Shopton, that's my name. I'll be right back with Tavis Smiley if he's still there. And Dr. Charles Ogletree right after this. Keeping it real, keeping it real. I'm your host, Reverend Al Shopton, and we're back. Dr. Charles Ogletree, his weekly time here on the show from Harvard. I believe we still have an aligned Tavis Smiley. And we're talking about an uh, incident that happened this morning. Uh, uh, Mr. Smiley announcing he is going to do a forum and uh, had some words that I took uh, disagreement with, and I think Dr. Ogletree did. And let me say this. Uh, I want people to be clear. I have a lot of respect for Tavis, and I hope that how this resolves itself is where all of us uh, can disagree uh, without being disagreeable and resolve it. I would have hoped that we could have done this in private, but since you decided to attack me on the air this morning on national radio, as you said, I answered it on the radio. Can I? Uh, and I hope that uh, uh, we can in some way show our people how to resolve sure. these matters. You, pro you, but, promised, you promised before the break you let me respond to what you said. Go ahead, said. please. I can do this uh, can I, before go ahead. both of you, can I, like, can I respond? No, but let, let Tavis uh, speak. I don't, well, he, I think he can respond to all of them. Let me just all right, go ahead. Uh, there are two points I made in the New York Times article you're referring to, Tavis. The first is that I said I think the pre there is a carefulness, not a reluctance, but a carefulness about what should be uh, said going forward from the president, uh, because he can't get ahead of Congress, even though he should use a bully pulpit. The second point I said is this, uh, that I find it puzzling, the idea that a president who happens to be black has to focus on black issues. Uh, that, those are two things I say, period, in this article. Uh, and, but, and I was not at the White House meeting. I was not at the jobs meeting. Had but no that article was it. before that. That's why I don't know how he exactly. confused the two. That I article think, was think, let me, two let me, weeks let me, before let me, that. Let me respectfully respond to, to both of you right. and, just, and just say, um, number one, for anyone listening to this conversation, this, this happens all the time in black America, quite frankly in America, period. Very quickly, three or four points. Anyone who did not hear my commentary, what's happening now is a bunch of conjecture about what I said. Reverend Al, I don't even know if you heard what I said this morning, word for word. So number one, let me invite everyone listening right now to go to my website at TavisTalks.com. You can download a transcript of what I said verbatim, and you can watch me in video in my studio this morning offering this commentary on national radio. So, Juan, go hear what I said, not what other folk are saying that I said. The second thing is I do not engage, Reverend Al, in any personal ad hominem attacks. I have never attacked you personally or privately. And so to say that I attacked you is wrong. Once folk hear the commentary, they'll be able to put that in proper context. Number three, I said in my commentary this morning, that I appreciate both you, Charles Ogletree, and all the other names I've listed for your courage, for your work, for your witness, for being freedom fighters. I said this morning in a variety of ways that I love you and there ain't nothing you can do about it. But the whole point of the commentary that folk can read or hear for themselves at TavisTalks.com is that it has come time for a conversation. I think we all agree. You host a radio show. I do radio and TV. Brother Ogletree, on your program, there's a huge debate in black America right now based upon these comments that need some clarity. Whatever you said, you said. Whatever you meant, you meant. That's the reason for having a conversation to understand, for the people can understand what these African-American freedom fighters meant. Ha-ha! <laughs> 